Hey everybody, welcome back. Uh, well, ain't this a... Well, it's something. This is into uh, us uh, because of a glaring problem, which we'll look at here in a moment. Um, but we're going to do just the standard, here's what I have, here's what it looks like when it comes in the door um, type of inspection. And we're going to do it the same way that we did uh, Jesse's guitar, which you can check out probably right there. Um, so, and I think that's going to be our standard uh, kind of format. Uh, we'll take a, an overall look at it, then we'll get really close and look at it, then we'll look at the inside, and then we'll go, all right, what, uh, what can we do, what should we do, what will we do? Um, this is a Carl Fisher Parlor Guitar. Um, upper bout is... A little under nine and a quarter. Lower bout is just under 13 uh, inches. So she's kind of a petite thing. Um, story that I get is it, it's 1920s, maybe earlier, maybe later. Uh, Carl Fisher was a music distributor uh, they did not make their guitars they had other people make their guitars and they put their name on it so who made this guitar is unknown i guess that's a, a good term for it so um it came to me with nylon strings um there is initially a one of the half moon or a quarter moon inlays is missing uh, there is no decal on um, the headstock I'll show you that in a minute. Um, there's a lot of mojo on it where the arm was up here I got cracked finish up here I have one split in the top two splits in the top That split looks like it extends over here. That looks like the start of another split in the top. Um, I got a nice, nice belly hump in it. Um, top's kind of caving in right here, where the uh, where the sound hole is at. And. Uh, new bridge pins that's a brand new set of bridge pins um, these are not old vintage um, looks like to be a bone saddle that is sitting at an angle um, and I know we're all going to hate to hear this um, I know the bridge has been off of this at one point and it looks like it's been put back on with Gorilla Glue There's a lot of scratching going on. There's some type of something or another that has made it up onto the fingerboard there. Um, there's a little bit of where the frets are kind of eh. It's had um, My guess is it's had steel strings on it at some point because I just don't know how we would do this with a nylon string, but we'll see. Black nut. I don't know what this finish is all about. If it is, I don't know if this thing's been in a fire or what. It's got kind of a inverse fan, mother of pearl inlay there. Um, again, we're just taking the, the quick, uh, the nickel tour, as it were. Um, I'm bent 
here. If you can see how this is hanging out, we'll just note that for later. Um, here's the back of the neck. Again, with some very fireish, melty looking thing going on. Um, got a black band around it. I don't know what that's about. It has a similar band around uh, the heel and you'll notice that there's some separation going on in the heel block. Um, let's look at the back. The back, I've got a big Mondo crack in the back. I have another crack in the back. I have another crack in the back. I have another, what appears to be another crack in the back. That's a lot of crack. But um bump. Um wooden strap button. And now here's here's the real ugliness. I have a split from here to at least here on a teeny tiny power guitar. which is really hard to get my man hands into. Uh, that looks, is that another one starting? And it looks like there's another one from there to there, at least. That's kind of weird. It's got a little green diamond in the wooden strap button and it looks like this crack there's a couple of cracks propagating across the back there and I mentioned there might be a crack there um, but all of the well, all the tuner machines are in place so alright let's uh, zoom in and we'll take a closer look Alright, let's start up here because it's, uh, well, it's the least painful up here. Uh, here is a quicker or a closer view of the headstock. I'm going to kind of rotate it here, hoping that we're going to catch some glints and you can see how gnarly and crusted that is. There is something right here that suspiciously to me appears to be a crack in the headstock. It runs from back there right through the hole and comes out here. Again, I don't know what is going on with this finish. It, I don't know. And let's see, oh, there's another little fissure there. Can we turn around and sure enough, right there. So this whole piece here has at one point been at least cracked um, and quite possibly uh, broken as far as come loose and glued back in. Uh, that's a wag on my part. We'll just have to see. And there is a... Is there another one there? This is getting old really quick. I don't see anything on the back, but that doesn't really bode well. There. Get a closer look at this mother of pearl uh, here. Let's turn the, uh, let's get it on the side. The buttons are, is that bone? It's almost got a, it's got the the holes in it like bone. Mm. We'll have to see if we can find out where these tuners come from. There is a little pattern on the side of them. It uses a kind of a weird flat uh, bevel on the wheel. Again, this is bent up. We're going to have to take a closer look at that and see if that's just something that we can that we can bend back up or if we're going to have other big issues. Um, and here is the back 
of these. Again, the back of this, I don't know what this is. It's almost like a smoky bear kind of finish. You see stuff that's been on fire and they just paint over it, it'll be okay. So, all right, let's continue with the back here. Lots of thumb smudge going on there. And then we get up to this kind of area here with our black line, which lines up with the seventh fret. Almost looks like there's an indication there of where the seventh fret is. Okay. Yeah, uh, you can see this again this pattern here and it does have a texture to it almost like like a snake skin or an alligator skin you can see the separations in the heel block there let's go back over here there's that same kind of pattern finish pattern sorry guy um, that's there on the back. I don't see any type of serial number. I don't see any remnants of a decal or a decal, either one. Um, all right, let's look at frets. I have a black nut. Um, not exactly sure what that's all about. We'll take a look at it again, see if it's painted or what. There is some f some fingerboard wear right there, kind of in the first position here, and you can see there's a tiny bit, some little indentations uh, right there. But once we get up to like the third fret, fourth fret, it's gone. It's pretty much disappeared. Um, so let's kind of creep along here. Um, someone has done a lot of this to it, which is pretty distressing and seeming to be par for the course for what's walking in here lately. Um, there is the, the half moon inlay on, uh, what is that, the ninth fret? Ninth and tenth fret are marked. Nothing else. And again, there's something has cre creeped along here. There's got some finish that's up on the fingerboard. So has that been refinished at some point? I don't know. You can really see the uh, apprentice marks, maybe from someone who may have done a uh, tried to redo the frets on it or maybe someone that was just really vigorous in uh, trying to clean it I don't know it's kind of like guitar archaeology at this point all right we're gonna do a flip-flop here all right so you can partially see the label in there um, it says Carl Fisher, and then it says make, and then underneath there, there's nothing. There was something there, but I can't tell you what it is. Um, and there are not a lot of these that I have been able to find so far um, on the internet to, to do any type of uh, comparison with. Um, so we're just going to have to kind of look uh the finish is kind of it's kind of it's a mix of mojo and dog meat um at least in my mind it is um it has some serious condition issues um crack which is almost on the same line as this crack which has a crack next to it There's a, a huge pebbly 
surface on this. Um, this part is kind of smooth, but there's, you know, in some places it's it's checked. Some places just worn. This place has just got a lot of, you know, forearm grease and stuff. You can see where it's, well, maybe we'll see. You can see the checking pattern right there, and then you just lay your arm on it over the years, and it gets in there, and pretty nice ding right there. Happened a long time ago. You can see this finish is peeling off of the binding here. Um, let's continue along this way. We are going to give this bridge a special close-up treatment. Crack. Um, lots and lots of finish. Wear. So there's the top. Sorry. I'm gonna flip. Now we're gonna start on the back. Um, finish and wear marks. It's got kind of a nice inlay there. And you can see where the finish, and you can feel where the finish changes. Crack. Possible crack. Great big chip or something in the finish. In fact, the finish is actually gone right there. This whole area right here, I mean, we're just looking at bare wood right there. Um, crack. Possible other crack. Um, is this Brazilian rosewood? I mean, it could be. Fits the time period. From what I've seen, um, big crack. I'm sorry. Big crack there. Uh, could it be? I don't know. I've I've seen some I've seen some postings mentioning it. Um, I mean, that would be cool, but who knows? Um, there is a separation at the neck joint on all three sides, as well as, <clears throat> all right, uh, as well. So let's just kind of take the walk around here. Big finish blob right there. And let's see. Starting right here and running all the way around to here is this crack. And we can see it will actually push back into place. Push that down there, push that there, push it this way, and it seems to all come back together. Um, well, don't know how much this is going to be able to get. Here is the little green diamond in the uh, in the strap button. I thought that's.
kind of cool. All right, I'm like 111-ish uh, thousand years old, so I'm going to try to make this as slow and steady as I can. Let's take a look at this bridge. And you can probably already see what I can see which is the telltale foaming around the glue joint which tells me some knucklehead probably glued this back on with Gorilla Glue which is the horrible stuff that was the back let's take a look at the side yeah you can kinda of see it on the side why did you I don't understand why you shut off like that. Make me mad. And there is the front. Are we? Getting, uh, I just. Uh, you know what? We'll take the strings off of it and we'll take a look at that. Yep. Pretty much the same. Hey, sorry about that. So here we are, inside. Pretty much the same. And here we are again, this time with the strings removed. You can actually see where it's not lined up right because the finish is a different color at the very base of it. So, uh, hmm. I also don't really like the fact that this is leaning. Yeah, it's most definitely leaning. Uh, okay, well, let's, uh, Let's look inside. This should be scary. Alright. Hmm. Well, that's something. Is it just a rod? Hmm. That looks intact. That looks attached. Hmm. And that looks chewed up. Hmm. I don't know what it is about people not being able to um, get the uh, get the holes. So it's right there on the edge. That frickin' Gorilla Glue dripping through there. That looks like the tail block is cracked. There's that big crack running along the side. And, well, that's not good. That's a broken brace. I'll have to get that the old clampy-clampy. 
My big finger in there. Hmm. Okay. All right, well. All right, let's look at the bottom. Again, there's that, I don't know if that's just a rod. That looked like another crack right there. Um, I, I can't even get my hand down in there sideways um, to hold the camera, which is why we're having to look at it in the vertical or the verticale. Um, yeah. Well, it looks like we got one crack brace. Boy, you can see that back crack right there. Here's the label. Six, eight, and ten, Fourth Avenue, Cooper Square, New York City. New York City. <sighs> okay, so now I'm going to get the paperwork out and we're going to document everything that we just saw. Don't ever use Gorilla Glue, please. Ever. Hey, if you like this episode of Rattle Can Guitar Restorations, you might want to check this video out as well. Be sure to subscribe to us on YouTube, and if you'd like to help the channel grow, consider stepping over to our Patreon page and giving that a look. Y'all have a good weekend. Cheers.